I am excited today to take you along with me and decorate my kitchen. I hope that this inspires you to decorate your own spaces in your home. So we have lived here a year and I really haven't taken the time to actually decorate my kitchen. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to clean up a few things and take care of things and get it all ready to do some decorating. We are even going to paint up there on the top. My husband just built that a few days ago and it's up to me to paint it. We're gonna switch out some rugs. We'll add some candles and decor pieces. I am so excited to get this started today. So here's just a little before I emptied out everything that I had. So it is a nice blank space for us to decorate today. The first thing that I'm going to do is switch out this rug and my dog Margo is always by my side so she wanted to get on the rug and play with me. This is a ruggable rug and I love ruggable rugs especially for the kitchen. You can wash them, they are amazing. I will link to that one and any products that I can in the description below. I am going to first vacuum and mop where both of my rugs were just to make sure that the space is nice and clean and fresh before I put down the new rugs. I love my Dyson vacuum. I have had a cordless vacuum for at least five years now and I don't know how I can ever go back to a corded vacuum. I think that they are worth the investment. As a family of six, I am vacuuming all the time. This is a Bissell mop and I love this thing. I only got it about maybe eight months ago now. It is the best invention ever. I can't believe I ever mopped with a regular mop for so long. I am gonna stop for a minute and let you hear what this sounds like in real life. The beeping noise you heard was me squirting out the solution. It, it's a combination of a just a cap full of a solution and a lot of water. Now, my main floor is about 1,500 square feet, so I do change out the mop pads once during my cleaning, but the solution will last me like a good two or three cleanings. This has saved me so much elbow grease with the regular mop. I mean, I was sweating by the time I was done mopping and it took me forever. So that is like the best invention ever. I will link it below. All right, now we're gonna take the time to get this spot painted because if it wasn't for decorating my kitchen, I probably would have been a few months before I got to this. So I am just going to fill the nail holes with the product that I showed you. I am also going to take caulk and caulk all the seams. Caulk really makes a big difference of making things look like they are more built in and supposed to be there. I actually don't mind caulking. It's a little messy, but I love the end result of when you paint something and finish a project. It is just a wonderful feeling. So I'm going to let the caulk and the nail hole filler dry while we work on a few other things. I love having a single basin sink. The only downfall is that my dishes drying on the counter usually stay there all day long. I am constantly washing dishes and it's just too much effort to dry them every single time. But we're gonna take care of those right now and I have a little tip for you. You can see I'm dancing right here. So put on music or I also love to listen to a podcast while I'm cleaning or even doing a chore that I don't really love. That just helps motivate me to do it and get it done and then I just feel so much better in the end. I would love to know in the comments below, what is your least favorite house chore? I think mine, besides the bathrooms, because my husband usually does those, 
but I don't like folding laundry. I have no problem washing it. I don't mind putting it away, but sitting down to fold laundry, I just cannot do it. Like I like to be up, walking around, feeling like I'm accomplishing something by moving and just sitting there and folding laundry. I just can't do it. So I guess that's my least favorite house chore. I'm also gonna take the time to clean my faucet and the inside of my sink really good. I love this faucet, it is a touch faucet. So I just have to touch it and it turns on and touch it and it turns off. It just makes life a little bit easier. As you can see, I'm wiping down the walls and that's because we don't have a backsplash on the wall yet. But stay tuned, I am going to show you what backsplash I picked for our kitchen. I'm very excited to show that to you. I had been eyeing this for a while and I decided to get it for my kitchen. I think it's something that I will keep for a long time. This was from Anthropology. They have three sizes and this was the smallest size and it's actually a pretty good size. And that one was $38. So I am just going to gather all of the items that I want to put back on my counters so that I can easily see everything and kind of visualize where I want it to go. The other night we were making hamburgers for dinner and some of the grease splattered. So that's why I'm giving everything a good cleaning just to make sure it's nice and clean. So the cookbook stand over there, that was from World Market. The utensil crock was from At Home and a lot of the bamboo utensils that you see in there were from Amazon. I also got this olive oil container from World Market that was on a recent video, but I'm just going to take the time to switch these out and make sure that the new one is nice and full for a fresh start. So now I'm just taking the time to figure out where I want things. I do a combination of how does this look aesthetically, alternating short things and tall things, but also looking at how often do I use this thing. So things like olive oil, salt and pepper, they're going to be closer to the stove because that's what makes sense. I use those on the stove. The cookbook stand I want off to the side so it doesn't get any food on it. And realistically, I don't use cookbooks that often, but I love the way they look on the counter. I just had to get a new cookbook for this space. I loved the way the cover was and I had heard so many good things about Half-Baked Harvest. I got their super simple cookbook and I love the way it looks on my countertop. I 
I shared this adorable marble container on my 25 kitchen essentials video and I love it. I have my pink Himalayan salt in there and it's so cute on the countertop. I am excited about these. These are brass pepper and salt mills. They have been very popular with home decor bloggers lately, but just one of these can go for over $100. I managed to find these on Etsy. Both of them together with shipping did cost about $100, and they actually came from Turkey. I just thought that was so neat. I really made sure that I wanted these. I waited about a month thinking about them. I am glad that I did get them. I will have to figure out how to use them for now. I just set them on the counter as pretty decor pieces. It is time to try out this rug now that the floor is nice and clean. I just got this at the store at home. It was $20. I usually have both of the rugs in my kitchen match, but I thought it would be fun to have a more neutral one in this space over here. So I'm just going to play around with it. You could probably use both sides of this rug, but then I realized that there was a tag on one side, so I did end up flipping it over. I also had to see how it felt under my feet. I'll be honest, the rug itself is fine, but those tassels have little knots in them, and those are hard. So I just have to be careful not to step on those. I love this rug. This is a runner I got off of Amazon. It's in front of my kitchen sink, but I love the dark moody vibes to go with my lighter kitchen. But I wanted to show you my secret weapon, which is this carpet tape. So this is very heavy duty tape and it's sticky on both sides. So it's great to put underneath your carpet to keep it in place. I usually put about four or five pieces down there that are about this size. Not super big, but it will keep it in place so it won't move around on you. So I'm going to take the time and do this to both of the rugs so they stay put. I want to stop and take a minute to show you the kitchen backsplash. I love it. Um, it is a popular backsplash. This is Bedrosian's The Chloe Tile. It is gorgeous. So it is glossy and honestly, I mean, when you look at my kitchen, it looks very matte and boring. Once this gets put up, it will look amazing. It will look stunning. I love this. It's a very neutral, timeless, classic tile that won't go out of style for a very long time. It is a, it says it's white, but it is a very warm white. I would say there's a hint of cream in there. And then each tile is a little different um, in the coloring. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but some are a little bit darker than others. So I am very excited for this. What I am going to do is I am going to stack them on top of each other like this. 
I mean, there will be grout, a lighter grout in between them, but this will give it a more modern feel as opposed to the normal way that it's like this. So I am excited. I did contemplate doing vertical, but I just wasn't loving only getting like two and a half in between the counters and the cabinets. So I think I'm definitely going to do horizontal like this and stack them straight on top of each other. I really like that look. I think it's something different. So I am excited to get this going soon. Now that the caulk is dry, I'm gonna take the time to prime and paint this area. So usually if there is raw wood like this, you want to use a good primer before you paint. So I will go ahead and give this one coat of primer and it will only take about two coats of paint. I usually use Sherwin-Williams paint, it just has really good coverage. Now my cabinets look like they're white, they are actually an off-white color. So I took one cabinet door in to Sherwin-Williams and got a color match. So it did take a few times for them to get the color right, but I finally got a perfect match. So that's what I'll be using today. Here is the finished product. As you can see, I did not really worry about the walls because there will be tile on one side and the other side. I just need to paint it pure white like the rest of my walls. So now we're going to put these oats into these containers. I've had these containers on my counter just sitting empty and I was like, why don't I put the oats in there? So my kids like the quick oats and we go through those fairly quickly so I will put those in the bigger container and then for myself I would use the old-fashioned oats so I will put those in the smaller container but it will be nice to have these in nice pretty containers on the counter since we use these fairly often and get them out of the pantry. It's time to decorate this section of the counter and I started with that smaller vase that I got from Target but it just did not look right. I needed something bigger so I grabbed this one off of my bookcases. I love this one. I'm pretty much obsessed with it. It's also from Target. I'll link it below. But then I put some faux olive branches that I got from Hobby Lobby in it. And they might be a little too big, but I kind of like how they're just overflowing. I added a wooden cutting board that I got from World Market and these candles I got from At Home. They were on clearance and I loved the amber color. When I refresh a space like this, I like to take the time to make sure everything is thoroughly cleaned. So. I cleaned off the countertops and the walls and now it's time to clean off the dishwasher. It always has water spots on it so I am cleaning this thing often. But I am going to grab some new towels. I bought these maybe like two months ago from Home Goods. I love the little pattern on them and I'm gonna put one of these up today. Next up, let's decorate the island. I got this tray from the store at home and it was $15, which I thought was pretty good. It's from one of their new lines. This vase I got recently from Hobby Lobby. If you saw my last video, I showed it in there. And then the flowers I actually got from Amazon, but I love that they bring a little bit of color into the space. They're very spring-like but they would be great for summer or fall as well. And then that bigger candle was also at home. 
So I'm going to light it and I think the space is pretty much complete. We have new rugs, we decorated by the stove. The island has a nice centerpiece now and then we also took the time to clean off the dishes and decorate this area over here. I love this space. I feel like it's finally complete, except for the backsplash, but we'll get there. So I'm going to let you enjoy the little tour for just a minute. I'm so glad you came along with me today to get this area nice and cleaned and refreshed for spring. I just love how it turned out. It definitely feels like home in this space now. And I will link as many products as I can in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you back here soon.